Thank you so much. Uh, I'm uh, quite excited to be here back at the uh, European uh, Central Bank. I would uh, like to thank uh, Oscar, who has uh, insisted that I should uh, definitely come and visit Ettore and other colleagues for inviting me to participate in this uh, absolutely outstanding uh, conference. I was quite impressed by the uh, quality of the uh, presentations and discussions during the course of today. Uh, in my own personal idiosyncratic uh, style, I will therefore uh, talk about something else. <laughs> what is it that I want to talk about? I want to talk about a theme that I have found useful to think about uh, developments in fiscal policy and prospects around the world right now. And it goes in the form of a policy trilemma. So the uh, start of the trilemma comes at the global level thinking that uh, public debt, global public debt is at a record uh, level. And if it continues in this path, it will go above 100% of uh, GDP by the end of the decade, which is quite impressive for the world as a whole. We have uh, learned that there are pressures on budgets right now, and one of the important pressures comes from increases in uh, interest rates, nominal and real, and relatively weak uh, prospects for growth. So the uh, famous R minus G has actually adjusted upward uh, quite uh, significantly. At the same time, the successful uh, fiscal intervention during the pandemic with quite generous uh, measures of uh, support to households and uh, corporations led to a ramping up of expectations and demands for public spending. And of course, there are many structural challenges from demographics to the energy uh, transition that are pushing spending pressures up. And at the same time, in many places, there are clear restrictions on how much taxation the public will tolerate, what we call political red lines on taxation. So if you have pressures on spending, if you have binding limits on taxation, and if you have risks on public debt, you face a trilemma. Something has to give. Either spending demands have to be scaled down. In any case, taxes will have to keep up with whatever spending ambitions will be in place, or otherwise, uh, public debt will be uh, ramping up quite substantially and f financial stability will become a mirage. So this is the trilemma. You cannot easily deliver on public finance sustainability, financial stability, accommodate demands on public spending and respect political red lines on taxation. My favorite example at this point in time, the Fiscal Monitor actually uses climate policies to illustrate the trilemma. But my favorite example right now is the United States. In uh, 2023, uh, fiscal policy in the United States had a quite significant turnabout with the deficit going from 3.7% of GDP in 2022 to uh, 8.2%. 2%. I thought that you guys would enjoy listening to the decimal points. I will kind of <laughs> forego decimal points in the rest of the talk. 
But the truly important thing is that the deficit is projected to continue at 7% of GDP as far as the eye can see. And at that level, uh, the public debt to GDP ratio will be increasing in a range of about 3% or slightly more than 3 percentage points of GDP per year until the end of the decade. And if it continues at that point in time, it will be above 140% uh, of GDP by decade end. But this is not uh, enough in accordance with the uh, CBO projections that were uh, put out in the uh, summer. So they're not exactly up to date reflecting the latest developments, this trend is projected to continue and actually to uh, accelerate until 2050. And in 2050, according to this CBO uh, forecasts, two-thirds of the revenues uh, in the federal budget will be allocated to that service. So this is, I believe, convex enough, even for Olivier there. Now, if you look at China, you basically see that China looks a bit like the United States when it comes to the public debt to GDP uh, trend. The only thing is that public debt actually increases faster uh, in China at about uh, four percentage point of uh, GDP. And uh, the uh, debt level in China uh, public and uh, non-financial corporate debt is extremely elevated. Okay? Now, our view, and this is actually the official view of uh, the IMF, is that both the U.S. and China have tremendous policy space, and so they can, both of them, adjust and control their public debt path if and when they choose to do so. And this is the point where I basically say that it is very important to understand that the rising path of debt in the world is, in a sense, explained by the US and China. Without the US and China, the rest of the world is actually projected to have a declining public debt to GDP ratio. So let me summarize uh, what I want you to retain from this part of the talk. Number one, the uh, trends in the US and China are very pronounced, but both the US and China can control it. The world as a whole has, after the pandemic, a substantially higher level of debt and the projection of the debt is that it will be rising faster than what was projected pre-pandemic. Without the US and China, debt is uh, lower than without the US and China, but it's also declining, but projected to be declining slower than pre-pandemic projections. So qualitatively, the situation is slightly different. Is this prudence of the rest of the world warranted? I would say absolutely. And the reason I would say absolutely, I get it from commercials on US TV. On occasion, there is quite a spectacular ad on TV. And then a, vo a voice tells you, stunt performed by professional athletes. Don't try this at home. <laughs> My point here is that if the rest of the world tries to follow the strategy which is viable for the US and China, the rest of the world will hurt itself. And so they should definitely uh, not try to do it. If we think about what is uh, uh, going on in the world right now, we see that uh, if we add all demands on spending up, we come up with huge numbers 
of uh, seven to nine percent of GDP pressures in advanced economies in emerging markets, and something like 14 percent of GDP for low-income uh, developing countries. If you look at Europe, you actually see that the uh, debt to GDP ratio is uh, projected to come down by on average almost one percentage points of GDP uh, per year. And the uh, primary balance is uh, uh, very close, is projected to be very close to balance by the uh, end of the decade. If I were uh, to worry about the euro area, I would not be right now be worrying too much about the aggregate uh, fiscal policy stance, although of course one can always do better. I would be worrying about divergences uh, among uh, member states. And if I would want to illustrate that, uh, one could look, for example, at the difference in interest rate projections for uh, Germany and uh, Italy. And if one would do that, one would actually see that one of the countries, Germany, is on the negative side of R minus G, while the other, Italy, is on the positive side of R minus G, and if you want to uh, guess whether that is important uh, or not, you can again look at Olivier there. I could now become really serious and go to the normative implications of uh, the situation that I described, but I decided instead uh, to uh, give you some short rhymes. And this, if you want to know, was uh, produced in a context that involves chat GPT, but also Antarctica. And if you will want to know more about stor that story, you will have to uh, ask me. So the rhymes go like this. Fiscal times now bind so tight. A trilemma in minister's sight. Pressures on spending, the men so keen, social needs and dreams unseen. Red lines on taxes, a warning sign, making balance an elusive design. For every choice, an outcome found in the political battleground. For every service, for every grace, a cost is borne in fiscal space. Taxes may rise or borrowing play, yet for people, dues always weigh. No deficit floats in vacuum vast, it echoes back in financial caste. Financial stability, a pillar so strong, in the trilemma dance, it belongs. As spending surges and taxes flat, stability weak as the anchor drags. Happy the minister who still hopes to navigate safely without tight ropes. If confident, if confident the boast will sound hollow, if doubtful, nobody will follow. And now the minister thinks, they come to me, they beg, they plead. Can we spend more and forget all receipts? No. I say, all we have is an empty purse and, mount and mountains of debt, the heaviest curse. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>